Greetings. You join me in mid-project. Partly because I've been just sort of picking away at this and partly because I forgot to uh, bring the camera down here. So, the uh, this is the, uh, the drill battery conversion. This free drill here that I got uh, from my curbside pickup last year. Um, I'll put a link to it up there. If you care to see where this thing came from, and also in that video, there is uh, uh, how I took this battery apart. It's not that exciting. It's like four screws and it just pops right out. Here is the stock batteries. They are NICADs. They are of the sub C form factor, which is basically C size this way, but smaller this way. Um, and they are designed specifically for building packs out of. So this pack is an 18 volt NICAD pack. You can see it says 18 volts right there. Um, my plan, ill-advised though it may be, is to replace these guys with some 18650s, NICAD, uh, lithium-ion batteries. And I think I'm going to use these Samsung one, uh, ones. If you care to look them up, they are... CR18650-26F. Where'd I get the batteries? Oh, look, there's another linked video up there where I tore some of these cells out of a laptop battery pack. Uh, so, what else have I got here? I've got um, this battery management BMS uh, uh, board. Basically, it protects against over voltage on charging or under voltage on discharging and will cut off the batteries to protect themselves. Nice. I don't know if it does balance charging or not, though, but there is a whole bunch of uh, other little uh, sensing and uh, little transistory kind of units on there, so I'm thinking it might do that. Anyway, it comes with this little wiring harness here, and I'll, I'll show you how that goes together later. Also got some nickel strip to solder the the cells together into a series configuration. Yeah, I know I had those backwards. Kind of like these ones are here. An initial plan, back before I ran into reality, was to try and put both the red ones and the blue ones in here, but they won't fit that way. And by putting them in this way, I can only get five, but at five times four is 20 volts. So that's reasonable enough for an 18 volt pack. Um, when they're at, you know, four volts is, or 4.2 is fully charged. So that'll put them at 21 ish. Um, their running voltage would be about three and three quarters or thereabouts. So close enough, right? But anyway, so five of those will fit in there, but there's no way to get 10 of them in there. Right. I've, I've been playing with this for a while. It's not going to work. Unfortunately, I would have liked to have the extra oomph in there, but sadly, it ain't going to be. So this is what we're going to go with. This guy will go in here somewhere. Maybe back here. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, then, this thing, when I found it on the curbside, did not come with a charger. Which is kind of okay, because even if it did, it would be a NICAD charger, not a lithium-ion charger. Which means we need to charge them using lithium-ion rules. Which means we need a constant current charge, or at least constant current during the first phase of the charge cycle. Um, lithium-ions are pretty particular about this. You can't just slam voltage across them and uh, let them buck. So, I got this uh, constant current, constant voltage buck boost converter off eBay, of course, in the last mailbag. Do I dare say it? A link up there. So, this lets me set a maximum charging current and then a maximum voltage. So, when it hits the current limit, the voltage will be reduced, which minimizes stress on these cowboys. Uh, when, when it hits uh, when the current 
uh, is no longer exceeding that, then the voltage will start climbing up to the um, the peak voltage of the pack, which I've got to do some math on and figure out. Uh, this other pot on here, I did some some Googling and some searching around. And so we have the voltage and current limits. Uh, and then the middle one is lights up the charging finished LED. And that one is also based on current sense. And you just set that as a threshold. So once it gets to the point where it's drawing whatever milliamp, a handful of milliamps, you can have it turn that LED on. Importantly, all that does is turn the LED on. It doesn't shut off the output. So you can't leave this thing cooking forever because lithium-ion batteries do not like to have a float charge just left on them constantly or full voltage left on them for, from the charging source. Nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydride, they don't care. They live for that shit. Lead acid, yeah, it's all about that. These guys, you'll, well, you won't blow them up. You'll just reduce their lifetime significantly. And these are already ancient. So, is this all going to work? I don't know. But in the wise words of somebody whose name I forget, don't let fear and good judgment stand in your way. So, I am, there is still some uh, charge retention left in these. So, I'm going to leave this pack intact just so that I have a plan B and a back out because it still does work with this. So I'm not going to butcher it completely. Um, I, I thought I might initially grab this, uh, this little thing, which sits up here and makes a contact to the batteries and the charger, to the drill and the charger. But no, I'm going to save that. And I've decided to make my own. So before you got here, I made this up just out of a chunk of random wood and some tongue depressors and some brass strip. Um, and that fits in there like that. Yeah. And just to test it, I connected it up to the power supply and then connect the whole shooting match up to the drill. Okay, so I got the power supply set to 18.8 volts. Close enough because the power brick that's feeding it is about 19 volts, so it's not gonna go any higher than that. And I got it set to, th to three amps. You can't really see that, that's okay. So I'll turn it on, leave it in amps mode. I've got this little test rig set up in here and It's current limiting at three amps and that drags the voltage down to eh, something. Oh, okay. There we go. Now that it's off, it's starting. It's actually up and running. It's not current limiting anymore. Let's see what that does once it gets up to speed. Okay. It comes down to about 2.6 volts. So we can reasonably run this thing on about on uh, three amps probably want more what does my where did my sticker go it's on one of them it's 1700 or 1600 amp hours 1600 milliamp hours so it could do three amps for half an hour yeah not stellar but yeah it's something but that's yeah whatever anyway this works um this fits after my dicking around with it for so long so i'm going to Take some five minute epoxy and peel this cap ton off here and stick some epoxy in behind there and just clamp it back down and wait for goof to dry and then uh, come back in a little while and do something else. So to create my series string, you need some of this nickel strip here. I think it should cut. Yeah. It's pretty soft. It cuts easily with those shop scissors. I think I might cut it a little bit shorter though, just in case. In case of what? I'm not sure. That's reasonable. So I've got the big tip on my soldering iron here because I want to dump heat in quickly 
I can get in, get out, don't spend too much time on it. Um, and so I'm going to start just by tinning the ends of these cells. Do I need to even warn you that this is not the way it should be done? But given the tools that I have, I'm going to do it this way. I've done it a couple of times before without blowing myself up. So hopefully same thing happens here. Just tinning the end. That's all. Just getting a blob of solder on there. Get in, get out. Right? Nobody's died yet. That takes solder really, really well. I'm happy about that. So now, I'm just clean my iron off because I don't need any extra solder on it. And touch that to there until that melts in. And then back off. Huh. That's interesting. Not too upsetting. Okay. Um, let's do this one. Get in. Melt, melt, melt. Come on. Melt, 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 melt. And get out. That was longer than I wanted to be on there for. But I think I've gotten away with it. So now then... They seem to be mechanically held. So that should be two cells worth of a voltage. When should that be in the 8-ish volts range? Okay. So now I will shuffle that along. And that's a positive end. That's a negative end. So I'll add that in. Now, this little vise has rubber jaws on it, so I'm not squishing the cells and mechanically damaging them. I'm just trying to hold them in a nice straight line here. Now, between this point here and this point here, should be somewhere in the 18 to 20 volts range. 20.7 volts. Woohoo! So now, that pack hopefully will fit in there. It's going to rattle around horribly, but it fits in there. Oh yeah, I'm going to have to attach these too, aren't I? So the black wire goes to the most negative, and then between the first and second cell, second and third, third and fourth, fourth and fifth, and then the most positive. So that is the most negative end of the battery. Let's just mark that. And that is the most positive positive end. Wish I had some red markers handy. But I also now need a red or a wire, a red wire and a black wire probably to come up to this little guy who goes up to the top side. And probably something heavier than what I've got there. So I'm gonna have to go and find some wire in my box. Okay this is probably overkill but that's okay. I don't mind a little bit of overkill. I don't want to lose too much current. So how far does that have to go? About that far. You know, mark the positive wear with some red as is fairly traditional in DC wiring. Um, this, by the way, is just electrician's phase marking electrical tape. Um, okay, now then, let's start from the most, I think I'm going to give this a little bit more length. Twist those into each other so that they're easier to deal with. As before, tin this quickly. And that's going to be the top, so. 
Let that sit until my fingers burn. Okay, that's solidly on there. So that is the most negative. I have to just go around here. That's on there. Okay. So now then this thing should have all the voltages on it. So that is the most negative. So this we should go up by about fours. 4.25. Should be 8 point something. Should be 12 point something. Should be about 16 point something and that should be the full 20 some. 20.7. Perfect. And if I put that down in there. That's sort of reasonable. I need something to stop this thing from sliding around and bashing into it. But I don't think it will short if I do that. Just for extra insulation. Throw some of this on. I may as well cover up all the terminals. There's no need to have them risking splashing against something. And after all this work, it might not even function. You have to stay tuned to the end to find out. Okay. They look vaguely safe-ish. So while I'm waiting for glue to dry, I went over to my more carpentry kind of oriented area. Well, carpentry is not really what you'd call it when I'm doing it. Anyway, um, and I started making a thing to charge the battery. So I took a couple of pieces of wood and uh, drilled some holes in them and cut some and uh, glued them together and kind of carved them out a little bit as best I could. So that they would fit over the um, the sticky up bit on the on the uh, drill battery. Then after that glue dried, sometime later, I uh, took some what is that uh, stainless steel strapping that I had for some reason and bent some slightly springy contacts. Actually, they're quite springy um, uh, to mount over the edges and come in contact with the contacts on the drill and uh, then screwed them down and put the uh, put a wire underneath each one of them making sure I got the polarity right of course so I don't blow things up and anyway yeah that so that that came together that was a lot more uh, dicking around effort than I'm making it sound like but it's mostly just a cut and fit or cut to fit job uh, trial and error sort of thing. So that's done. So we've got this piece out of its clamp. So let's see when it's up in there. Do those actually make an electrical contact? So the negative screw terminal there, that's making contact. Beauty. And the positive screw terminal up here. Yep, that's working too. Awesome. As hokey as it looks, it does the job. So now I guess I can connect that onto the charger board. This is probably a lot heavier wire than I need for this, but. It's never going to get warm, is it? I just decided to use solid core wire because it'll make it easier going under those screw terminals. That's the real reason. I'm going to be powering this thing from this laptop power brick. I've got lots of them. Um, they put out 4.7 amps at 19 volts, which is more than enough current, but it's only 19 volts and we need, what did I say, 21 volts? Which is why this is actually a buck boost converter. 
That's why I chose that specifically so that I can get more than this 19 volts out of it. Okay, so we want to get 21 volts out of that. And that shouldn't be that hard to do. Unless I'm using my non-conductive ceramic screwdrivers for this. I don't need to, but should they slip off, then I'm not going to cause myself any issues. 21.0. Okay. Now, to measure the current, I'm going to use this guy in current mode. And so since it's set to current, when I put it across here, it's going to cause a short, right? And you see that LED change down there? However, what are we drawing on there? We're drawing 160 milliamps. And if I remember correctly, that's the constant, the current uh, adjustment. Okay, there we have about 500 milliamps when we're in constant current mode. And what should we set that end of charge state for? Right now it's on because there's literally no current being drawn. So for an end of charge current, I'm going to arbitrarily choose 50 milliamps. And to do that, I'm going to want to clamp a resistor across here to draw 50 milliamps so we can set that threshold. We want 21 volts over 0.05, so 420 or thereabouts ohm resistor. And how much power is that going to be? 21 watts times 0.05. That's going to be one watt. Wow. Okay. Let's see what I can come up with. How about a five watt, 470 ohm resistor? Okay, yeah, this isn't what you'd call the ideal test setup, but. So there's our 50 milliamps approximately. Try that the other way. Why won't that blue light shut off? Huh, no matter what I do, that blue light won't matter. Okay. Maybe we need to draw a little bit more current out of it. How about we put in 100 ohms? Which is going to be couple hundred milliamps yeah okay so maybe we add another resistor another hundred ohms that'll be 200 ohms that'll be 100 milliamps approximately and you can see this thing okay so there's the little blue lights coming on right there for 100 milliamps. I'll turn this down just a little bit more. Set somewhere below 100 milliamps. That, that thing's going to come on. Close enough for me for now. Again, did I mention I'm just experimenting here? Okay, for now, that's the charging sorted out. Let's go back to this. Now this thing is uh, is glued up and I've kind of scraped the uh, excess glue off there a little bit so that should be good. I went and found the wrong kind of foam to jam in here just so that this guy doesn't rattle around. So I'll cut that down. Where'd my... That's working pretty well. I think I'll put a little bit down the side there too. Just a narrower strip. There. That's better. We'll put a bit of foam on there just to protect the batteries from abrasion. 
Hopefully that'll work. Solid. So I think the next thing to do is to attach these wires and make it dangerous. At the risk of this edit getting any more choppy and, uh, and disjointed, I'm just going to pause here for a second. I realized after a bunch of dicking around that I'd made a mistake when I wired the BMS to the batteries. So I'm just going to jump ahead to me fixing that and then hopefully we'll get back on track here at least a little bit until the next mistake. What have I done wrong here? That needs to go in series with the minus line. Right there. And that's not touching anything dangerous. Solder that back down. Now this one can go up to our little tower thing. Oops, the tower of power here. Okay. This time for sure. Maybe. 20.7 volts. Right. Place your bets. What do you think is going to happen? The options are it'll work perfectly. It'll work half-assed. It'll explode in flames. Something unforeseen. What do you think? Moment of truth. Okay, so it it seems to trip out if I just jam it right quick like that, it trips out. But if I let it ramp up in acceleration, it's got bugger all for torque though. Let's put that to low speed, high torque mode. Ah, well, it sort of works. It's not perfect. Um, what happens if I put these batteries on? Can I stall it with these? Well, I can almost stall it with my hand, but there's no protection on these NICADs preventing them from from uh, hurting themselves. And this does have the protection in it, which is, I think, what's going on there. Let's try the other side of it. Let's see if we can get it to charge. So there's that. I've got this thing plugged in. I'll turn that so that we can see that. Hold your breath. Okay, so that end of charge state light is coming on which means there's not a lot of current being drawn okay let's try this again give this guy some power yeah it's showing its end of charge because there's no current flowing hmm there's no current flowing why is there no current flowing are these things not making contact? Just pry those contacts out a little bit more so that they are making contact. Possibly a little bit too much now. Okay, that's definitely making contact. Well, definitely, nothing's definite here. Okay, that's making contact, right. So, clamp the ammeter on. That's powering that. That's showing end of charge. There. We're charging. We're charging at 100 milliamps. Cool. So, I should be able to use that as well 
to charge this, shouldn't I? Maybe this isn't a total loss after all. We have an end of charge light. Will it take current? Yeah, it's taking half an amp, which is the current limit of this guy, which is fine. Now, the old constant current, constant voltage thing isn't needed for NICADs. It won't hurt them, it'll just charge them slower. Um, but it'll work, and now I have a way to charge this thing. Oh, the current's starting to drop off already. That's awesome. Well, this wasn't how I ex wanted this video to end, but I didn't know. I thought this pack back here might uh, might uh, work out okay. And it can power the drill, just not very well. Not at high torque. It cuts out because the battery protection circuit does its job and cuts out when we're drawing like very high amperage so uh, it's i don't know a little disappointing but it's not a total failure because i learned stuff i haven't done a lot of playing with lithium batteries and battery management and battery protection circuits yet so in order to do what i did i got some stuff and tinkered around and tinkering around is probably one of the best ways to learn as long as you don't start a fire. Um, anyway, uh, I'm sure there's people who know a lot more about uh, lithium-ion batteries than I do. And if you're one of them, feel free to uh, uh, say something down in the comments. Everybody else, yeah, what the hell? You guys can I, you guys can say something about me about what's going on here too in the comments. I don't mind at all. Matter of fact, I appreciate the knowledge. Thanks for watching. Um, Hopefully the next video will uh, have a more successful outcome, but whether it succeeds or fails, I learned something. Maybe you did too. Cheers.